In writing about the current of inner alchemy, I have outlined a number of techniques that can be used by the practitioner in order to affect what could be referred to as, the real world. What I mean by this is that, if we define the real world as that dimensional location that we refer to as physical reality, the three-dimensional space, that which can be perceived by the physical senses, then, just like anyone else, a practitioner of inner alchemy needs to be able to manipulate effectively, within this heavy dimensional location. While physically alive, we are all stuck here you might say, this is our operating theater, our school. As such, we learn many skills by existing here, and all of these boil down to being able to learn how to manipulate, how to work with, and deploy the potential power to be found here. Another way to say this, would be to say that the great gravity of this physical dimension, challenges us to learn to deploy our own personal energy, while in the midst of it. And this is no small task, because that great gravity makes this place very thick, heavy, and any work that we do requires a lot of time and attention on our part. For the average person, physical manipulation usually means just the ability to be able to manipulate objects with objects. Being that they consider themselves and the world at large, the only world they can perceive through their physical senses, to just be objects, that is, the physical senses tell us that we are an object, surrounded by other objects, then for them, the manipulation of this world is the manipulation of objects only, through the use of levers and mechanics, as one object is pitted against another. But for the inner alchemist, it is not about the manipulation of objects, it is about the manipulation of energy. As such, they are not stuck within the framework of those bounding rules and the gravity of the purely human measured essence, of this heavy physical reality. Instead, they can use different energetic principles and techniques, that can allow them to go beyond the bounding walls of materiality, as it is defined by the human world. More specifically, they can use certain energetic techniques to get what they want, what they may need, in order to survive in this heavy world. For example, in accordance with my current, I have described the general use of thought forms and servitors for this purpose. This is the favored method of my current, and the reason for this, is to try to keep ritual to a bare minimum. My current favors direct energetic manipulation, over ritual. In other practicing schools of occult science, that is schools of what can be referred to as a kind of hidden science, there can be a number of different ritual techniques for the same purpose. Of these, the most famous or well-known are the use of spells, sigils, talisman, and other such techniques that may be quite involved ritualistically. It is possible to think of ritual, as a kind of recipe in the simplest sense, and that by following a certain procedural step-by-step -step formula of inner and outer action, the practitioner is able to bring about a number of different possibilities, some of which seemingly beyond the power of purely physical manipulation. The problem with such ritual though, at least from the point of view of my current, is that it can breed incredible morbidity in the practitioner. It can also tie down the practitioner to physical things, that then may become precious to them, needed, and all of this will begin to weigh the practitioner down, bind them to those forces that they are trying to overcome. For that reason, the techniques that I have described, while they do resemble a kind of recipe, try to stay away from ritual as much as possible, and I always try to point out that no physical paraphernalia is needed per se, it is only a help to the attention, that can later be thrown away, once the attention of the practitioner becomes powerful enough. But what is the difference between spells, conjuration, and ritual work? What is the difference between a thought form, a servitor, and a real entity in regard to such spells and conjurations? Well, this is actually a pretty complex question, and one that is really difficult to answer in every single case. What I mean by this is that depending on the grimoire or the spells being used, it can either be the creation of a thought form using a certain spell, it can be tapping into an existing servitor, an existing subjective entity created by others, that has been used over and over through the ages, which then later turns a simple thought form into a servitor, or in the more powerful spells. It can be making actual contact with a non-organic being, and making some kind of trade with these non-organic beings to get what you want. The average simple spell is usually a thought form. A relatively simple spell that might be found on its own for example, or that might be found in a collection of such diverse spells, 
that might not have very much in common with each other, usually works by creating a simple but sometimes quite powerful thought form. One can say that even simple spells are a ritualized step-by-step -step procedural system, that through that ritual, the attention of the practitioner is focused with great intensity on a particular task, and the nature of these physical actions, coupled with the intense emotion that they might engender sometimes, in the best of cases greatly empowers the spell caster's attention. In that way, the practitioner is able to put together a powerful thought, one powerful enough to be referred to as a thought form, that is, a thought given a kind of almost material essence, a form. Such a thought form is then, through the process of the ritual, pointed in a certain direction and allowed to do its work, it is let loose. Such thought forms, being what they are, can bypass material hindrances, and can bring about incredible results if the thought form is strong and stable enough. More complex ritual practices for the same purpose, where a kind of grimoire is used, usually involve servitors or what some may call egregores. In this case, you could define a grimoire as a book that is made up of a collection of spells, but one where all of the spells might have a certain correlation, identity. You can think of a grimoire as a more structured spell book, that might have a general theme, that might take on a certain archetypical consistency. The interesting aspect of some of these grimoires, even some of the older ones, is that they may describe the use of what at times may even be fictional deities, that is deities that are more of a human creation than an actual non-organic entity. But over time, as I described in the video, tapping into the Santa Claus egregore, which I will leave a link to in the video description below, this constant attention and use, turns such archetypical themed fictional characters, into quite real things. That is, what once was only a mental thing, a subjective creation, can in time become a kind of real thing, a kind of condensed thought form of such intensity that it begins to manifest an essence, an identity. We can further describe such a servitor grimoire by saying that such spell thought forms, in time become true servitors through constant attention. A servitor is in essence a hyper-focused and incredibly powerful thought form that acquires so much power and complexity that it grows an identity. Such long-standing and well-used grimoire can in time grow so much in power, due to the focus of many powerful practitioners, that in the end the line between what the average world may call fiction, and reality, becomes so blurred that really all such conceptions, at least from the average person's perspective, are moot. Of course, I am not saying that all grimoire are made up of fictional characters, but what I am saying is that certain general conceptions can in time create divergences and characters, that are not wholly real, from an energetic sense, a sentient other alien life sense. But in time, because many powerful practitioners are using such characters, and such ritual, these characters then, in time, do become real, and indeed powerful enough to act as a true kind of living essence, which sometimes has been referred to as an egregore. This is how the gods from a certain pantheon may come and go, how they may be incorporated into other pantheons at other times, due to the archetypical nature of them within the human mind, and in the end, all such subjective gods or demons can and do become as powerful and as complex as something that might be classified as truly being alive, depending on your definition. The last and most powerful of such spells and spell books, a real grimoire let us say, involves true contact with sometimes highly powerful other beings, and it is these that are the most dangerous spells and rituals. Such grimoire, would then be an actual book of contact, a book designed to manipulate energetic locations, and deep inner facets of the mind, in order to open doorways that lead to the world of non-organic entities existing, out there. Such a grimoire would in essence reveal through such ritual a true gate, a door, to other places where existent other life may be found. Such other life is non-organic, meaning that it does not have the kind of corporeal essence to be found in the physical dimension, but nevertheless such powerful and nearly immortal super-intelligences are alive, are real, are sentient, and can be contacted using such a grimoire. When this kind of powerful true gate opening grimoire is used in order to get something, then there is usually some kind of trade made between that non-organic super-intelligence, and the practitioner. But, due to the great power, and the overriding alienness of such super-intelligences, these kinds of trades between practitioners and such other life, seldom end well. 
And even when such rituals work as intended, there can at times even be certain consequences due to the sheer chaotic nature, from the human point of view, of these outer titans, that what could be referred to as payment for services rendered, may just turn out to be, eternal entrapment for the human practitioner. As such, as I have said, the simpler spells, and especially the servitor grimoires discussed earlier, can oftentimes be far better when it comes to general use. Dealing with true non-organic super-intelligences, the outer titans as some have called them, is in most cases quite dangerous, and should only be attempted by highly skilled practitioners who are looking to perform very specific kinds of transdimensional manipulations. How do you tell the difference between thought forms, servitors, and actual non-organic entities? I suppose some academic research could be done, in order to try to identify the source of the forces used and described in the ritual. But in the end, I think that the only real way to know for sure, would be to have someone who can perceive energy directly, using the inner senses as I write about in my books, and in that way perceive the nature of such ritual work on a case-by-case -case basis. Such a seer, would then be able to identify thought forms from the non-organics, and the different gradations and specifications of each. This can be a very complex issue though, this kind of identification. Certain grimoire for example, might have certain parts of them where certain spells are just thought form creators, other spells might involve a complex thought form, a character, a defined kind of fictional god or demon, that over time has become a servitor, an egregore, and you may even find a couple of powerful ritual workings in that same book, that can under favorable circumstances open real doors to the outer titans. Some academic research might help, in identifying the general nature of the spells used, and the forces that might be contacted using such workings, but in the end many mistakes can be made through just academic means alone. Purely academic research into historical use can bring with it all sorts of problems, being that such past sources can sometimes be very hard to identify and verify. As such, the only true way to work with such energy, where the possibility of dealing with non-organic outer titans is possible, is to only work with what you know well, until you are able to perceive energy directly yourself, until you can see. If you would like to know how to use thought forms and servitors, in order to manipulate within and without the physical dimension, then I recommend the trilogy of books made up of, Create a Servitor, Create a Servitor Companion, and Manifest Wealth and Prosperity with Thought Forms and Servitors. I will leave a link to these in the video description below.